Alrighty, it looks like we're live again. Anyway, welcome on in. So today's going to be um, some more TMNT1 uh, code analysis. So uh, last time when we did this, uh, we were looking at some of the uh, cutscenes and whatnot. And today I just want to continue with those, so that way we can get that um, logic kind of separated from the main code. And then we'll, yeah, we'll just see how it goes. So um, last time we focused on the intro cutscene. Today it's going to be uh, more of a focus on, what is it? When you beat level two and then you return back to the sewers. And depending on how well that goes, uh, we might even be able to look at the blimp cutscene as well, which is when you beat level four and are you know, transitioning to level five. So, um, yeah, I guess we'll just uh, get into it. So let's uh, change views here. Everything is uh, looking okay, it seems to be. All right. So, what I have uh, set up here is, um, sorry, I'm just going to refresh my windows here. What I've set up here is, um, yeah, just uh, one of the logic that we're going to focus on basically starts. So, um, during the game, as um, I kind of said last time, there's sort of like a special state where um, if this is true and um, during the game, it then uh, processes that logic instead of the main game logic. Hello, Muji. Welcome on in. Hope you're doing well. Yeah, we did some messenger earlier, so yeah, we beat, uh, what is it? Special, the bonus content, I should say. It was fun, though, but it had a really tough boss midway through. So if you get a chance, please check it out. Anyway, um, yeah, so let's uh, pretty much go through that in the, uh, what do you call it? In the debugger. So in the fixed bank, it's located at D03A. Okay, cool, cool, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was uh, just a good time for me to do it. So, you know, that's why I did it at that time. Figured, well, I could have done TMNT, but nah, we'll do TMNT later at its more or less normal time. So anyway, um, so yeah, in bank six, um, we go to this address. It looks at the uh, game substate. Pretty much, um, if the state is a negative state, then it goes down to here, so in the code, it's kind of like when it's a positive state, um, it does these. When it's a negative state, it gets rid of the uh, negative bits and then uses a different table. So the positive state is pretty much like setting stuff up, and then the negative state is like continuing the logic, is how I would uh, interpret that. So yeah, we load it in, we jump table. And that takes us to A1F3, so that's in a different file here. Yeah, A1F3. And uh, the uh, pause screen is actually part of the cutscene, too. Like when uh, April delivers this message. That's part of it. So we uh, check the state, um, it uses the... I, I will need to rename this at one point, because intro cutscene state is kind of inaccurate. It should just be cutscene state, because they reuse that memory uh, for the various cutscenes. But for now, we'll just keep it as, you know, intro cutscene state. Is it greater than 19? So that's leading me to believe that there's a total of 19 different states. In this case, it's on state 3, so it's clearly not greater than 19. And we'd um, swap in bank two. Yeah, this game is all over the place. The bank swapping. So in bank two, go down to B5EA. Or not, well, not B5EA, but B5B. 
And once again, we load in our state. It's going to take us to B675. So that's this. So, and these are... Yeah, how can I say this? Like, bank 6 is kind of like a in general state a handler, but then the individual state logic is handled in bank 2. So, yeah, they, they really split things pretty much all over the place. Yeah, and one thing that uh, we'll find later is that uh, when Shredder gets on the TV, the text for that is actually in the fixed bank of all places, which... Yeah, you don't need that in the fixed bank, you really don't. <laughs> All right, so I'm back to six five. Loading a timer. In this case, the timer is uh, not to zero. Looking at the comments here, D one A D. D one A D. Yeah. So this is shared with the pause screen that it um, draws the map. So for that, they have to swap in bank three. So yeah, we go to bank six, then we go to, you know, if we check some things, then we go to bank two, check some things, then we go to bank three. So yeah, it's just all over the place. But um, the map has already been drawn from what I can see here. Myself in the bank, what in that? I should say, um, it doesn't, it's not just uh, drawing the map though, um, but it also updates the pause logic. Yes. Message. But, um, yeah, the message is, as you can see in the game view, uh, the message is already on screen here, so we don't really need to bother with that. So we're just going to skip that part and then restore the bank. That's what TMNT does quite often is they switch a bank, they back up what bank you're currently in, they, you know, swap in the bank, do the logic, and then look at what bank that you were in, swap that back in, and, you know, again, all over the place. So, Alright, going back to bank two. Got this, um, A9, so it's clearly not the number three. Let's see here. So CFDD is in the fixed bank. Yeah, this just um, performs some memory clears from what I recall in the comments. So that's, um, it's pretty much kind of like setting up the next phase of things. And um, for the purposes of breakpoints, I'm actually happy they do have this, but yeah, whenever you um, have something like this, like a JSR, then an RTS, that's just a sloppy way of doing things. You can just, you know, jump. But this is going to be the very last instruction. There's no reason to return back to this point. But whatever. Yeah, we'll let it do its memory clears and then we'll RTS. So we skipped ahead. I don't know why I closed the fixed bank file. CC9C. Uh, then it, so DO42 is just the sprayed zero hits thing, because sometimes cutscenes happen during gameplay, but um, in this case we don't actually need to worry about that part. So, um, yeah, we'll just skip over that. In fact, uh, let me look at things here. It's pretty much um, all we need to worry about logic-wise for the frame. 
So it just uh, is setting up. So I'm going to skip uh, a couple times, actually, until the screen... Oh. Looks like here. I'm just going to put the breakpoint at a different spot first. Let's put the break breakpoint here in uh, bank 6 rather than in the fixed bank. So we're on state 3. Still on state 3, state 3, state 3, st state 4. Here we go. So now something different will happen. So once again, we swap in bank 2. I'm going to put a uh, second breakpoint here in uh, bank 2. So that way we can uh, skip over the uh, swaps every time. So B5, B. So in this case, um, state 4 is going to be at 699. All right. And yeah, we're just swapping in some CHR banks. Probably put some uh, comments here um, for the pre-level free cutscene. Not only gets the CHR, but um, gets the pallet. Uh, sits the scrolling or the Y scrolling to zero, which is good. It's kind of weird because some of these sometimes these cutscenes don't actually reset the scrolling properly. I guess they just assume that you're in the right position at some points, which I don't really uh, like that solution though, to be honest. All right, so yeah, we're gonna skip over the bank swaps. Move this. Sorry, I'm uh, changing my desktop windows here. There we go. Okay. So yeah, anyways, for Y scrolling is zero. Um, D one C nine. What's D one C nine all about? Oh, okay. So, um, this is a routine that's it's typically used by uh, cutscenes, but um, you set A and X before you call this, and um, it does a kind of lookup to write a series of data to the PPU. So, in this case, it's going to, um, here, we'll actually go through this a little bit. So, yeah, we again swap in the bank. So now we have Oh, that's kind of hilarious. So A is supposed to be what bank that um you're going to swap in. And I like that uh, you know even though we're already in bank 2 they say to swap in bank 2 again. Oh man. I don't know, I guess at some point the data was in a different spot, I don't know. But yeah, okay, so we you know, bank two and then swap in bank two. And then um, X, then when we call this, um, X is actually the index. So there's a um, table where um, you use the index and then it creates a pointer to the series of instructions to actually um, draw the PPU data. So in this case, um, you can kind of see this in the debugger. Uh, let's see here. Uh, one sec here. So it's going to be at um, bank 2 at B036. Yeah, B036. And yeah, I even uh, wrote in the comments here, it's possible people you write. So these are going to be the um, EPU writes for drawing. 
the level 3, I guess the 3, level 3 cutscene. Um, the turtles walk in the hallway to the door. And yeah, it's a long series of instructions, so we're obviously not going to go through all of these, just, you know, trust that uh, that's what they're for. I will, um, let's see here, create a label for this. Yeah, here we go. So this is at B036. And in fact, uh, let's see here. E3C. We got here. Yep, here we go. B036. And I even wrote in the comment because I wasn't 100% sure at the time, but it isn't indeed in Bank 2. And this is the um, data for the three level 3 cutscene. Parentheses, hallway, walk. I'm wondering if uh, B199 then is actually when the turtles get back in and they're inside the lair. Because um, it's looking like that's actually what it is. Because then um, you have this FF here, which um, is signifies the um, end of the right. And starting off, you know, build is the PPU address, so it'd be at 2000, not 0020, but 2000. That's what I'm assuming this is going to be. Alright. So anyway, um... Yeah, we can, uh... Say... That's pretty much all it's going to do, um... In this, uh, series is... It's going to write... Where was I at? And for the sake... Full screen, full screen. Yeah, here. It's the palette, um, it's the PPU data for the hallway scene. And then um, it increases the state, sets up a little timer. I guess since so uh, we are in bank two, we can get a breakpoint there easily enough. So Alright, yeah, we'll put a breakpoint here after it uh, does all the rights. So yeah, up the states. Uh B8 B7. Those watts down here. Okay, this is called uh, a couple of times, actually. Times. The first time it calls this, um... Need to set A before calling. Um... A corresponds to an index. Sorry about the uh, background noise. Hopefully it's not too loud. Yeah, and now that we're in the summertime, I have to have all the windows open because it's way too hot in here. So let's see. Um, in this case, A was zero when we called this, so Y is also zero. Let's see here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's the thing with the uh, Japan apartments. Um, 
There's no like centralized air conditioner or anything like that, so. But I don't really want to turn on the air conditioner at this point. So just open the windows, have the fans going. Good enough. Let's see, what is um this data that we're loading in here? Wondering if um, we're setting up some kind of pointer here, actually. One sec here. Not entirely sure what the first one is, but this. Yeah, okay, this is definitely setting up a pointer. So, okay. So, how is this. Um, Data actually grouped them. Zero. Well, since we have a plus four, um, let's see here. A plus four. That would then imply that, um, so these first four are some kind of Something based on the index, and then these next eight are going to be um, pointers. So um, B nine five E B nine six four or six three B nine six eight and B nine six E. So get rid of these. And um, that first address is right here. Huh. Okay. So build and compare to make sure we did these correctly. Yeah. So let's see. Six. I guess I'll create the labels right now. One thing I am kind of happy to say is uh, oh, a good portion of this uh, project, like this uh, game, has labels made for it. So, in theory, um, a lot of stuff could actually be moved around and uh, the game would still run properly. Because yeah, that's pretty much the uh, biggest uh, thing of a disassembly, is just making all those labels for everything. All right, so, okay, we got our labels in place. It's the first two of these. Let's see, we're making our pointer. One to a zero, transfer to X, transfer to Y, so both X and Y are zero. So load until your pointer. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what 3D is supposed to be. 3D0. Okay, but I can kind of see though, since the first number is a 4, that does signifies the length of this data. Because I have the 3 down here. Okay. First number said is length of data. And then we start our loop here. Um, Alright, so we can uh, use the 
debugger for this. Let's go back up to E8, D9. So this is uh, clearly going to be a loop. And when we're at this uh, part of the code, we can get to the length of the data. So we back up the length twice for whatever reason. So yeah, I'll do that. Okay, I think I... All right. So um, the data then is actually going to be um, object IDs. Um, because when this scene starts, um, there are actually four objects that get updated. Um, it's the left and right door, the speech bubble, and then I believe the turtle, um, it's, they don't actually use the actual turtle logic, but, um, just kind of like a special object for, um, the turtle. So, okay. Um, so we create the pointer, um, let's see here. Creates pointer to I guess data that correspond to objects used in the cutscene. Okay. So yeah, that's what the loop's gonna do then. It's just gonna Right in our objects. A, A, F, B1. Alright, so that was that loop. Go back one second. Okay. Uh, we load into X zero. Put a D one three six. D one three six. Well, my comment says uh, potentially setting hit points, although. Not really sure why cutscene would necessarily need hit points for objects, but we'll find out. It could be, though, that the, they use the memory for the hit points for a different purpose. So, fixed. So we get some data from bank six. And yeah, it's clearly um throwing it in the object's health. Okay, so not we're um, not only getting the health, but um, we're getting the um, animation pointer. Like, um, there's a um, an ID which corresponds to um, like how the object should be animated. Like, what sprites the object should use. Okay, that makes sense then. So, all right. So yeah, we do that. Do that. Do that. Do that. Return. Do that, do that, do that. Go back real quick. Mm -hmm. D eight six. So this um. It's HP and animation ID. Carry flags, subtract this. 
Oh, okay. So, um, this is a loop, actually. Another loop. So this kind of doubles as a, um, kind of like getting the objects and then, um, updating the objects. Ah, Rexus with the raid. Hello, everyone. Thank you very much. Uh, Rexus, how are you doing? What were you playing? Okay, hello to you too. Yeah, yeah. Hey, hey. Yep. Anyway, welcome on in. So today is actually the second stream of today. Um, we're just doing some analysis on TMNT's code. Uh, we're trying to figure out uh, how some of the cutscenes work. So not, you know, not exactly the most exciting part of the game, but... Um, you know, as we understand more, we can separate the logic out further and then, you know, focus on the other stuff. So, uh, let's see, are you playing through dot .hack mutation on the PS2? Sounds cool. Um, I never owned a PS2, though, so I know I'm unfortunately not familiar with it. But yeah, what's, uh, what is it uh, all about? Let's see here. So I'm thinking um, this kind of initially sets up the objects. Then we subtract AE from the ID, which makes it be an index. Jump to subroutine. And this um, this functions as a second loop, so I'm going to call this, I guess, objects updates loop. And then instead of just calling this loop here, um, maybe call this objects setup loop it's a cleaner name for that action rpg that plays like simulating oh nice 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 yeah. so is that there's a virus running it's in the mmo and putting people in real life into a coma hmm nice well i mean that situation not nice but uh, the premise sounds interesting Oh, and have to figure it out and beat the virus. It's not the worst game, but yeah, yeah, no, no. Sounds yeah, it sounds like, yeah, like you're really enjoying it. Cause I, yeah, I think I had seen that um, in your uh, profile a few times. I, hmm. Whenever I'm sort of like um, look, gradually looking on Twitch, at some people are like, hmm, cool, cool. All right. Let's continue here. Um, so we subtract that. So we do our update here. Let's see here. So jump with subsequent table. Four games in the series started. Okay, nice, nice. Yeah. Sounds like you're going to be busy for quite a while then. Because RPGs tend not to be the shortest games out there. Okay. It's a long game. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, the good good news about that though is then you'll have plenty of stuff to stream. <laughs> um. Recently, I was playing The Messenger. I don't know if you're familiar with that game, but. Um, yeah, that was also kind of long. It was about 12 hours or so for the first playthrough. I did find out that the group who's, who made the Messenger is actually making their own RPG, so that one looks interesting as well. The um, title of the RPG is Sea of Stars, and um, it's got some very nice-looking... Um, uh, what do you call it? Pixel art. So yeah, um, I hope to check that out. Maybe not when it not immediately when it comes out, but you know, in the near future. I think it's due for release later in the year. But um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Aww. So 
So I'm wondering if this is not necessarily an object update table, but like an object setup table. For um, because yeah, it looks like um, it's positioning the objects in the uh, memory here. Yeah, and then setting up the speed. Okay, that would make sense then. Um, so maybe instead of saying object setup loop, um, object ID init loop, and then this could maybe be the object setup loop. That would be a pretty good name. Yeah, that's one of the things with uh, programming is um, it's always hard to come up with like the best names for things at times. Because, you know, you want to write clean code. You want to try to have, you know, good names for things. Because when you come back to it later, like, oh, what was that for? Oh, yeah, that was for, you know, setting up the objects. And that was for, you know, initializing the IDs, things like that. Yeah, that's something that, um, especially in my current line of work, doing web development is very, very important. As you know, you know, in web development, you have lots and lots of people working on the project instead of, you know, just just me. So, but all right. Um, so, yeah, this is going to um, loop through and initialize. Um, and not, not initialize. Yeah, I guess initialize the objects. Things such as position speed etc speed animation etc okay cool, cool, cool. all right so now that we know uh, what this loop does we don't we don't need to go through the other objects there's not really any point in doing that so we'll just skip over that Did I miss something? Oh, I guess I still have a breakpoint on. So take this breakpoint off. There we go. Okay. So anyway, we're done with um, the object setup loop. takes us back up to takes us back up to B six C what C A and yeah again in the comments I wrote this is there's no reason to jump to subroutine and then return and just jump that's just wasted, uh, wasted code, but whatever. So what was, um, CFTD for again? Okay, more memory clears. See here. So again, do more. Yeah, they... It's weird, they like, clear the memory and then clear the memory again, so... Whatever. Alright, let's advance. So, um, now that it's set up the cutscene... So, yeah, there's really not any reason to go to Bank 6, actually, now that I'm looking at this. I'll have to remember that for uh, next uh, iteration. Because all of the uh, logic is really happening here in Bank 2. So anyway, we're on... Uh, so now we're on State 5. So I'll do all that. Uh, B6E. Just looks at the timer. The timer is zero, we advance. In this case, timer is not zero. So we go to here. Okay, and then um, 
this then um, acts as like an so the first one was like an object setup thing this one is like an object um what was i gonna say an object update thing because after we set up the objects you know they're already there so we update the logics of the individual objects let's go back up then um So update the objects. Yeah, I guess we could uh, check out the individual objects as well. So it looks like 3D0 and 3D1 kind of act as um, object counts for the cutscenes. Whereas 3D0 stays constant, in this case, the scene is updating four objects, then 3D1 is kind of like an iterator. So it's going to go through each object and update one by one. So knowing that, uh, we could actually give that memory a name. Three D, three D. So I'm gonna maybe call this like a cutscene object counts, and then maybe object iterator. That's V1. And then in here, counts, object, iterator. Nice. So now the code became a little bit more readable. And now, knowing that, um, we need to just. Uh, updates the instances of this no, uh, well, let's first do the iterator and the counts build nice all right cool so yeah it's one of the Kind of nice things in the disassembly is once you figure out what the memory is for um you know code then is forever more readable from that point on so this acts as a loop so again subtract this and then this updates the objects So in this case, first object is BA2E. And this is the turtle object. So what um, happens is, is during the cutscene, is you have a turtle walking down the hallway, and then it keep, um, he keeps walking to the right until he has an X position of um, greater than or equal to B0, so which is yeah, kind of off to the right a little bit. And then uh, he stops and then kind of updates. So in this case, his X position is zero, so that's clearly not greater than or equal to that. So we go down here and exit. And... Okay, and then this routine then just applies speed to the object. In this case, um, the turtle is only walking horizontally, so Y speed is, of course, zero, so nothing changes. X speed, however, does have a value, so it's going up by uh, two every uh, frame. So then we increase. We go on to the next object. So again, jump to... B999, that's a nice number. B999. 
So, um, then in the hallway there are two doors, like, well, I guess it's a door with, like, a left and right part, but each part, or each half, is actually, uh, treated as a separate object. So, in this case, it's the left one. So it checks this, um, and it, uh, decreases the value. So, this is kind of like an object timer value, where, um, in this case, it's going to wait, um, so if you look in the debugger here, so we decreased it one, so it's going to wait seven zero, which is what, um, 112 frames, so just a little under two seconds. And then when it does reach that point, um, the door then will start to open. Because I'm looking in the logic back up here. Is um, once it's past that point, it then triggers the sprite attribute, and then it's applying a speed to the door as well. So in this case, a negative speed because the door is going to open to the left, and so forth. So yeah, then we return, we apply our speeds, decrease the iterator, and now we're going to update what I'm assuming is going to be the right door, which has similar logic and yeah that's it b9 cf and yeah there you go the right door sprite so same thing it decreases the timer uh when the timer reaches zero then in this case it's going to apply a positive speed because that opens to the right and um so anyway yeah what is this decrease the timer and one thing that's kind of interesting um in the american version you can kind of see there's some extra code right here. Um, there was a sound effect that's actually cut from the American version. Um, the code to actually play it still exists, but um, when you play sound number 3-1, it just plays a silent sound. Um, the door is opening actually had a sound effect where they kind of go... But yeah, that's cut from the game, so it does nothing. And that's uh, tied to the right door. But yeah, then we return. Uh, if I expanded the game, it would be very easy. It would be very easy to restore that sound if I wanted to, though. So anyway, yeah, we apply again. Apply our speeds. The speed is zero, so nothing happens. We decrease our iterator, and then we go to the final object, which is, in fact, the speech bubble, where um, when they get to the door, they start knocking, and then... They say here, where I don't know why they need to knock on their own door, but apparently they do, so. Anyway, BA6. So this is again a timer. Timer is zero, we go down. In this case, timer is not zero. Um, let's see here. Okay. It does a comparison against the number two zero. So basically, um. The two doors in the speech bubble have a 7-0 timer. After 5-0 frames pass, which is the 2-0, the speech bubble then appears. So like the turtle gets to the door, starts knocking, the bubble appears, and then the door is open after the bubble's on uh, place in place for a little while. So that's what this uh, comparison does. Um, so if we're greater than 2-0, then we haven't reached that time yet. So we go down, we decrease the timer, and then um, right here, this um, it's clearing this bit, which is bit one. So that particular bit corresponds to whether or not the object is visible or not. And that makes sense, you know, the speech bubble, it's there, but it's just invisible. So yeah, we just do that. And again, uh, applying the speed for this, the speech bubble has no speed, so nothing happens. 
We decrease our iterator. In this case, iterator is zero, so now we exit. Nice. So, okay. I think timer might be kind of a wrong name for this. Like sometimes it is more like um, kind of like miscellaneous memory. It's not necessarily a timer, but at the time when I found it, it was like a timer, but I'll figure out a name for this later on. In this case, it's a zero. So yeah, we kind of clear our memory and exit. So, all right, um, so now that we know what this routine is doing, um, goes through the various objects. And waits until the time timer has passed. I guess that's good enough for now. Okay, that's it for the frame then. All right, so yeah, now we're, we actually can see the cutscene. As, and as I said, I'm gonna get rid of this break one on bank six. There's no real reason for it to be there. So yeah, we just do our state updates here in state two, or on bank two. And yeah, so it's gonna pretty much continue with this. Um, Because, yeah, we're back into the um, object count. So, I just want to go back to the turtle object real quick. Um, I want to see. Just one more thing before we uh, advance. Just want to see what happens when you go up to eating. Okay. So um, this object is once the turtle reaches um, his ending spot, um, stop the turtle from moving. Sets speed to zero. Got it to bed, it's almost four. Yeah, yeah, no, I understand. Cool, cool. Anyway, yeah, I'm uh, glad you enjoy it. And um, yeah, we should uh, definitely uh, upload this one to YouTube as well. Last one, I'm, uh, I kind of paused for a whole bunch, so I don't think I'm going to bother uploading that one. And there wasn't like a whole lot we figured out, but yeah, this one, um, we're definitely learning a lot. But anyway, have a good night and uh, hope to see you again. And uh, enjoy that RPG. All right, let's see. Yep, see ya. Take care. All right, let's see here. Well, yeah, I guess since um, we're pretty much dependent on the turtle, actually, if you look at the uh, freeze frame here, you'll notice the uh, speech bubble is actually visible. And I think it's going to be visible for exactly one frame because the way um, updates in this game happen. 
So if we, um, so yeah, we know that um, it's just going to be waiting on a timer, so it's going to continue with the state, so I'll advance it, and the speech bubble should disappear now. Yeah, there you go. So yeah, just advance, 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 advance. advance. So yeah, we're slowly walking towards the door. It's kind of weird that, uh, what is it? Like the turtle's kind of inside the bricks when he walks. And like how parts of the uh, background, like you'll kind of notice that at the top, like you have the two things, gray bricks, and then halfway through they change to green bricks. And then same thing with that little, under the bar, you know, some gray bricks and then green bricks. So, I don't know. I mean, I guess they, you know, I mean, they, they at least tried to put some color in this, so can't really fault them for that. But anyway, um... So yeah, we're gonna get to the door. Turtles are gonna stop. Let's actually go into here now. Okay, so yeah, the cutscene is timer still one, so yeah, we do our updates. We once again update the turtle. The position is at B0, so in this case we are going to go here. Yeah, every frame too, it sets the speed to zero. Which is kind of a waste, actually. Uh, check the frame. Just need to... Uh... Can I expand the debugger? Or if the debugger's gonna get kind of weird looking. It's a one. Alright. So I guess it's uh, waiting for the animation. Okay. Oh no, it's decreasing the timer actually. So. Advances. Sorry, I'm gonna go through this one more time. So jump to the turtle object. Set the speed to zero. Two E. Well. Wow. Okay, now the turtle's knocking the door. So one more time. Um, this time... Turtle knocks. Open the table. The animation. So then uh, the turtle then has a countdown as well here. So once that reaches zero, then um, I think that's when it's going to advance. Yeah, we can skip this. And then we're gonna just, I just wanna look at where the doors are at this point. Of the... So yeah, those are at two one at this point. See, so yeah, it's going to continue for 30, 33 more frames. See, so let's do that. You know, one, two, three, four. There's the here thing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Thirty-one. Let's see what happens now. And then um, waiting 10 frames here. Or not 10, but uh, 16, 1, 0. 
Okay, so now the doors should actually start opening. So again, two, three, four, five. There we go. The doors are starting to move. Nine, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Stop. So we're still on state five. All right, going again through our iteration. So again, look at the object, speed is zero. Oh, seven more. Let's do that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's go to eight. So yeah, we're still on state five. Okay, uh, now this is zero. So we got some new logic to look at. So then from here, it's going to decrease the timer. And then when the timer reaches zero, then it transitions. Timer. And it reaches zero. Go to the next state. So here we go. But in this case, um, it's... Uh, it was 64, and now it's 63, so there you go. So it's going to wait about... So in... 64 frames is like just a little bit more than one second in game time. And yes, right through here. Okay. See the turtle disappears. So yeah, let's just keep advancing that. I think we can speed this up actually. One sec here. B5, B. To state five, state six is B six F four. Let's um do that. Put a six. And why is, is it F four? Yeah, F four. Let's put a breakpoint here. So temporarily take off this breakpoint. And there we go. Now we're on state six. All right, so this is state six. Um, let's see here. And yeah, my instincts were almost right. It's not the sewer hallway, but this um, looks like it's going to be the um, inside of the layer then. I'll see, 16 plus seven is 23. D1, C9, what is this two? Ah, okay. Yeah, I think um, I'm pretty confident with this is um, if the bank for the PPU data. Maybe uh, later on I'll give this, finally give this a name. And again, this is, um, yeah, this is again in bank two. Okay. And let's see here. PP writes. Here, X was 
15. Six, eight, ten, ten, ten. And yep, yeah, my instincts were right, so B199, which was uh, what we created a label for earlier. Yeah, this is the uh, PPU data for drawing the layer. The layer. So we're drawing. Um, this draws the, I guess, messed up layer. Where the turtles, mine, splinter has been captured. Goes the hallway where the turtle walks to the door. Nice. So there's that. Um, yeah, we don't need to uh, go through the draw. And then we get the palette. And then we, so we again, we don't need to go through. Uh, the uh, writing of the palette. And yeah, we increase the state. And go down. Okay, cool. Let's go back. Um, let's see here. Okay. So going back up to. Uh, B5B. We advance, and now we're on state 7. B71E. So like the um, previous state, it um, uses this as kind of like a flag to kind of continue updating some logic. Um, let's see here. P9. Okay, this is a um, shared routine from earlier, where we again have an object count and an object... Um, I'm wondering if we missed a state then, or missed part of the state. Go backwards real quick. Ah, yeah, I think we did. Yeah, we missed this. Um, Yeah, we missed the um, object setup, but yeah, it um, does something similar to um, what the uh, previous state did as well. Is um, you set an index, and then it sets up the objects for um, the next scene. Okay. So Let's see, I'll put a little comment above here. Is um, yeah, set up the objects to be updated and then this state is um portal enters the layer finds now it's, it's ruined walks in and then yells master in a speech bubble All right, so this is going to be similar to the um, previous state in that it's going to, uh, yeah, go through an object count and object iterator. In this case, it's going to be some different objects, though. So it takes us down to BB01.
and I will add a label for that in the debugger. So I'm going to guess that this is the turtle object. Don't know for sure just yet, but I'm going to assume it is. Given that the first object was the turtle object. This is kind of branch. There was some noise outside, so I just muted myself briefly. Alright, so... Again, um, this uses some kind of timer, so... This is some timer. Possibly the turtle object. I don't know that for sure just yet. We'll find out. Okay, so yeah, it just decreases the timer and exits. And then, like before, they apply some speed. In this case. Why subpixel actually has a speed? And why... So it has... Oh, so yeah, the fact that it has a Y speed and a negative X speed, that it has to be the turtle. Because the turtle starts in the uh, kind of right and then moves to the left, and so it has a negative um, X speed. So there you go. Okay. Oh, so there are four objects? I know the speech bubble is going to be an invisible object. Let's see here. Hang on, EB01. Turtle objects. Some timer for walking into the room. And it's which is zero. And then we'll go from there. Oh, let's see here. So BB70. Basically, I'm um, deck timer and exits. And given the, um, hmm. So, what happens is um, it decreases the timer. When the timer reaches zero, it flags the object as being visible. Possibly the speech bubble. It could also possibly be that um, animation that plays on the TV. Because the TV has some sort of like static thing that appears when the turtles get into position. But okay. So decrease that. And then apply speeds. In this case, there is no speed. Um, X position is nine zero. Alright. I'm assuming it's gonna be the speech bubble, but again we'll look at the other objects. B B A B B, B, A, B, okay.
convey six. Let's definitely decrease. Move to a four is five zero. Four five zero. Wait, nothing here. D B A B. Which people here? Do I jump to here? This seems like it's a shared routine. Shared routine. Decreases something. I'm not sure exactly. It might be a timer, but again, I don't know exactly. Something and flags objects as invisible. So whatever this object is, it's invisible. So y position is 8c. X position is 3, 0. So I'm inclined to think that's the TV. And one more object. BC04. Again, put a label on this. All right. Man, they really like to use all kinds of different memory locations for this. Speak well. Yeah, this was uh, before, so this is also invisible. Speed, y position is eight zero or eight eight. X position, um. Not really sure. Unless there's like two things on the TV. Alright, I'll go out. And yeah, we're basically done, yeah. Go to the next frame. Hmm. So it was kind of like where you get um, certain things are visible on the on the very first frame. Let's go look at the memory real quick. So on the sprite memory or the object memory. Or is this going to require us to put the game in action? Can we actually update? No, the game has to be playing for it to do an update. Let's do another thing real quick here. Um, Unfortunately, I don't have a view for this in uh, 
OBS See, I'm looking at these sprites and TV static is one thing, turtle is another thing. Hmm. Oh well. But yeah, what basically is going to happen then? Turtle walks for a little bit and then uh, does master and then goes in there. Um, Hmm. The turtles that's here. Six zero. Nine zero. Cause nine zero would be like middle of the room. Oh well, whatever. I guess we'll advance the frame. Two, two. Okay. So he stops. Once again, go through our objects uh, updates. Again, we're not at zero. Um, check our frame. Force the speed to be zero. Yeah, not a big thing. And this, there we go. So after 1D. Yeah, let's run this. Um, so 1D is what? 29 frames. So. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. A change animation. So we'll get into the iteration. So we're going to skip uh, the first iteration and run the second one. So yeah, that's now zero. It gets flagged. That gets flagged. Decrease the, t decrease the iterator. So we'll look at the next object. Oh, wait. Looks like the object might have changed um, IDs on us. Hmm. 
right? Need this. All right, so whatever this is, going to be another forty eight frames before that actually appears. So that's fine. Um, so now master should appear. There we go. Right, let's uh, yeah, just keep this going. So something like uh, forty. I said 48, but uh, we advanced it three times, so about 45 more frames. Not even really counting. I'm just going to wait until uh, something on the TV becomes visible. Oh, there we go. It's weird, it's like not even uh, centered with the TV. I mean, I know that animation happens kind of quickly, but still. Ah, oh, okay, this is just the turtle object. Um... Skip the speech bubble. Going to check this scratch papers. Here's everything but the uh, visibility flag. Hmm. Oh wait, I wonder... I think I maybe understand what it might be. Um, let's go through... Um, so that was the third object. Let's uh, go through the fourth object real quick. I think I got it. So kind of like with the door... There's maybe a um, left and right part of the TV static. <laughs> yeah, that could very much be what it is then. So the TV static has kind of like a right part and a left part. So what kind of happens is like it plays the left and then that disappears and the right and it kind of goes back and forth and then gradually um, kind of like appears and disappears at a faster speed. So okay. Six frames. Yeah. Let's go through a three, four, five, six, seven. Yep, there it is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yep, that's what it's doing. So you have a kind of like a right object and a left object. Yep, and now it's starting to uh, flash on us. All right. Um. So let's uh, go back into here then. So we update our objects. Yeah, we already figured out how the objects work now. Apply the spades, yep. Yeah. Let's go down to the RTS. 
So what else is uh, now happening? Ultimate setting, branch fingers. Hmm, okay. So then, um, three, six. Okay, so then based on the um, global timer, so that's kind of interesting. They um, don't have like a cutscene timer. But it's based on the global timer. Every four frames. Um, it will alternate between um, black and red. We're not, um, report, like, um, what was I going to say? Every four frames, not play, huh? Use a red BG, otherwise it was black. So the red flashes every four frames. So then um, frames 1, 2, and 3, it's black. That's what I wanted to say. Okay. So yeah, these are all kind of like some sort of state checkers, basically. Clear memory and exits. It's all right. Let's so go down to our RTS. Next frame. Yeah, that just pretty much continues for a little while longer. So pretty much until the uh, timers, um, you know, count down, um, just stays on this state, and then updates it. Okay. See, there's a red frame. Mm. So it looks like um, it's done with the red. So let's check this here. Okay, so now um, this thing is at zero. And then this. Okay, then finally. Um, so, reset. Basically, like all main logic where the state has finished. Take the timer and go to the next state. Yep, that's pretty much the end of this logic then. So, 14 more frames. So, yeah. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. There we go, state 8. Wow. So now we're at state 8. B7. This is this. Okay, so um, this is pretty simple. Um, simply helps the states and 
sets a short time and clears out memory. Yeah, I can already tell that's all that this is doing, so we don't need to uh, go through this. All right, state nine. Yeah, state seven took so long. State and we're already at state nine. Given the um, kind of pace this is taking, I think um, when we get to Shredder, we'll probably hmm? call it. And... Okay, this is state nine. State nine is. Okay. Simply waits. So, timer is a very short. <laughs> so, there the objects disappear. So, we're on state nine for like two more frames. All right, now we're on state 10. I think in total this had like 19 states. But all right, state 10. All right, so state 10, we get the CHR, It'd be like um, graphics for Shredder, and um, I think his hand is also a sprite, so that has graphics as well. CHR, mallets, 16 plus 13 is 29. All right, 16 plus 8 is 24. All right, so we can skip over the bank swaps. And yeah, in does the PPU rights for Shredder on TV. You, right? We increase our state, we set up a timer. Now let's go down to that in the debugger then. Increase the state, timer. Okay, and then this would um, set up the objects. Well, you know what? Um, I already know what it's going to do, so I can just go to the next frame. Alright. So now we're on state 11. E79B. Okay, so the um, timer then acts as a um, palette. So what happens is it slowly fades in. Fade in Shredder on TV. And I'll probably bet later on um, when it's finished, it fades that out with the same uh, table here. But instead of you know decreasing the timer, it increases it. That's what my guess is going to be. 
TV ROM. The cup index is based on the timer. So these are heat palettes indexes for creating the for creating shredder on TV for the pre level three cutscene. Shift, 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 shift. Transfer to Y is 4, and yeah, there you go, you destroyed your palette. Yeah, there's the TV. It's basically um, not the entire palette, but just the shredder part of things. So yeah, this just continues then for about one second worth. If we, you know, keep advancing, 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 advancing. Here you can see shredder starts to slowly appear. And he's mostly into view. And now he's in view. So let's keep doing that until we get to state 12. Probably should. Oh, oh, oh I missed state 12. That's okay. Um, let's see, where was this? So, what it's. Day 12 do? Okay. Yeah, it just sets up some indexes and timers. Okay. Sets up. This is timers for shredder on TV. Maybe it sets up like the initial. Alright, so state 13. This is going to be um, finally talking to us. Shredder starts talking. Well, I guess Shredder talks on TV. Would be the best way to do it. So. This branch will go to the next state. That's going to be a while away, though. Yep, this just updates the objects then. So, update objects. Remember, this was a layer of some memory. So, yeah, we don't even really need to. Well, I guess we'll do one iteration of the object loop just to see what the objects actually are. So, in this case, it says there are three objects. Oh, I know Shredder's hand is definitely a big sprite. What are the others? Is that maybe part of Shredder's face is a sprite? Not sure. Alright, um, table. Eight. 
So is this state in state 13? Yes, it is. Alright, so it's invisible. Applying speeds. I'm gonna skip that for now. Please go to the speedy 4E routine. Yeah, um, and yeah, I even had a comment here. Um, basically, yeah, basically, it's. Uh, the cutscene is on this date. Maybe if it's on the right states? Hmm. So they must have had some, um, kind of like just in case logic, I'm guessing. Hmm. So I guess if somehow. This object was in memory, but it was on the wrong cutscene state, then it wouldn't uh, update it, is one of my guesses. So again, some just-in-case kind of logic. Alright. Yeah, um, I'm not going to be too concerned with the um, cutscene logic. Or rather, the object logic. There aren't really that complex of objects in this part of the cutscene. So we clear the memory so we can skip that. Timer. This X is an index. Um, F220 D3. Oh, wow. Yeah, this makes a pointer to the text data. So, effectively, um, the acts as an index for the current set of text order. And then F22, okay. 220 then is going to be what's up. A if zero goes to the logic for updating 
texts in the pre level three. So it's not zero, it goes down to whatever this is. I wouldn't be surprised if they had some similar logic and or something else, I don't know. So we make our pointer. So that's, that makes our pointer. Read pointer instruction to zero. Changes that to a one. Okay, so instruction is zero. That seems to signify. Start of a new line. Sets up you address. Hmm. In this case, is that two two e two? And then we increase our pointer index. So we back it up twice for whatever reason. Cutting advanced timer. Because yeah, his text does kind of appear slowly. Freeze for cycles. And this, okay. Okay, and then um, it's going to put what? It's going to process um, whatever's in the PPU. Not process, but kind of like writes. Start writing data to the PPU here. Interesting. Um, so I guess this D3 might be some kind of offset. Because um, every frame it needs to write the letter, you know, a little bit further from the left. So that might be uh, what that is then, is like an offset. Slow that. Load in your tile. And then it's going to load in tile 2-3, which I believe is um, a capital T. Yes. Because, yeah, the um, actual message then is like, that's right here. This is the uh, data for it. 
So he says, this is Shredder, listen to me, Turtles. And yeah, we need to increase our offsets. Okay, then F3, almost done with the main logic here. This then plays on plays. So when each letter appears, it plays a sound effect. There's a spec for better walking on TV. Okay, I'll play the new audio. No, I should have skipped this logic. Actually, I think I can still do that though. Um, Down here. All right, cool. And I guess um, and this signifies a successful right. Very clear. Letter of Twitter's text appearing. in sets of three it looks like yeah so then these are some kind of instructions um so from the looks of it um this is kind of like an index of where to start in the table this would be like the next line of that index because he has uh, basically four things of text and then the ff here um, since he's done talking, would be signifying the end of the cutscene. Seems to be a lookup index. P seems to be next line. A0 seems to... Maybe like next page would be the way to say that. Then... Seems to be finish. Okay. All right, so that's pretty much that logic then. So now that we know that, we're gonna feed, which it's not. Yeah, let me exit. All right, cool. See so yeah, how we're gonna. Yeah, there's the T. It's gonna stay on states thirteen for quite a while, it seems. To our basically write all the text. So let's put a B8. When this is state 14, I just want to. We're going to let. Um, hmm? Yeah, we're going to let the um, actual cutscene play out in its entirety. And then we're going to let it go to state um, 14. But from the looks of it, um, the objects are Shredder's hand, 
his eyes and his mouth. Um, in fact, if I turn off the sprites... Yeah. So the mouth... And I guess the uh, blinking eyes. Alright, so now we're at state 14. And then going back up E. Let's put our breakpoint back in. So E821. So Shredder is done tapping. On TV. That's a zero, that's a zero. We clear some memory. You pretty much clear memory and go to the next state. Alright, be straightforward for this. State 15. And it's here. Yeah, this, yeah, pretty much like I was just saying, um... Yep, we increase, yeah, it just does it in reverse then, to, um, fade out the TV. So, um, using that same index, that same data from earlier. Talking directly, there we go. Aid Redder out on TV. Use a similar logic to aid in. Let's stand reverse. Now we know that. Um, that's all the state's gonna do. Let's go down to um, state 16, which is here. So the shredders are gonna fade out. We're on state 16. Yeah, I keep. Uh, Moving the breakpoints the wrong way. I'm supposed to do it down in the table, not up here, but whatever. Okay. Alright, so state 16, we're almost there. There's two more states to go. And it's in some CHR. So, what I think this does then is, um, it re-triggers the uh, pause screen. Go back. Go back again. Let's see, set the scrolling to zero. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And there was this one special variable. Um, so when you beat a stage. Um, like, it triggers some scene where um, either Sp Splinter or April will talk to you. And, um... So it's based on the uh, current level you're on. However, in the case of level 3, there are actually two of those scenes. There's one when you get the last bomb, and then there's another one where April says, let's go help Splinter. And since, um, you know, that would be two for the stage, um, you can't base it off just the stage. So that's what uh, this particular memory was for. It's something I figured out when I was looking at that logic a while ago. And what does D15C do? See, we're almost... Okay, yeah, close, close the pause screen. 
Got the purple screen for people's follow up message. Yeah. Alright, so we can, uh, yeah, we don't need to have purple power screen since we already have that logic. So go to there, go to there. Yeah, set up some timers. Alright, so now we're on state 17. We're almost there. And what I believe happens is it triggers the pause screen and then um, just waits a little while. Yeah, I remember D1AD is related to the pause screen logic, so skip over that. And yeah, let's see here. Here is some memory and exits. So here's the pause screen. It hasn't uh, fully drawn the map yet, but there you go. And April's gonna appear. And then the message is gonna start appearing. And yeah, let's go help Splinter. This is what she says. And then in the background, this just waits so many frames. So oh, let's see here. So yeah, let's put our final breakpoint then on E890, just here. And we can clear this. And there you go. Here's the level 3 cutscene flag. And then also clears out the main memory. So like this uh, memory is pretty much reserved for cutscene purposes. And yeah. So it does that. Clears the memory. And there you go. And then some other logic happens to load in level 3. We, um... Yeah, I think if we play again, it's just gonna... Yeah, there you go, level 3 starts. So yeah, that was it. Alright. Let's save my lesson labels. Yeah, I think that's gonna do it, because, yeah, this was, uh... Kind of lengthy, but definitely figured out a lot of the general stuff that happens for the cutscenes. Or uh, this cutscene, I should say. So yeah. That'll... much do it for uh, the stream. Switch views here. Alright, anyway. Thanks everyone for coming in for the comments. Um, learned a lot today. And maybe next time we'll be doing uh, the level 4 cutscene. Where the turtles get onto the blimp. And that should pretty much do it. Well, no, I guess there is also the ending cutscene. And yeah, once the cutscenes are done, then we can maybe finally start looking at some of the game logic. We'll see how that goes. Anyway, thanks all for coming in. And let's do an ending card here and find someone to rage shortly after. One sec here.